John Cena and Randy Orton's rivalry has captivated fans for decades as blood, sweat and tears have fueled their battles with championship and pride on the line. So as John Cena announces his retirement from wrestling in 2025, speculation was rife about who his final opponent would be and most fans were quick to suggest that it had to be none other than the Viper Randy Orton which would be fitting because it would bring their story full circle. So join us as we relive the epic saga of Cena vs Orton, a story of ambition, betrayal and redemption. As their rivalry helped define an era and helped shape the WWE Universe that we love now. Third generation, son of a Hall of Famer, Randy Orton was born to be champion. The greatest star in the WWE ever! There's only one John Cena. From an awestruck eight-year-old fan in the cheat sheets of the old guard. And my time is now! If there ever were two superstars that were destined to be rivals within WWE, it would be these two, as the parallels cannot be ignored. Both debuted in Ohio Valley Wrestling in 2001, marking the beginning of their professional wrestling career. While Cena wrestled under the persona of the prototype, Orton was starting to build the foundations of the legend killer gimmick. And during their time in OVW, they developed their in ring and promo skills which were crucial for their future success in WWE. So Senior's tenure in OVW saw him engage in notable feuds with Dave Batista and his athletic prowess and developing charisma quickly set him apart leading to his capture of the OVW Heavyweight Championship once which is an incredible feat considering the class of 2000 was stacked with other superstars such as Brock Lesnar and Shelton Benjamin. So for Randy Orton on the other hand things were a little more difficult coming into developmental. Being a third generational wrestler came with a lot of pressure so when he came into OVW there was a certain chip on other wrestlers shoulders as many felt as though he was being handed everything to him without even trying. Right away everyone looked at me as look at this kid he's coming in he doesn't know a thing and he's got a contract but I knew that I could do what I was meant to do what I was born to do what I was bred to do and that's professional wrestler. But it seems that this was just a stepping stone for both men, as within a year their journey to the main roster began as the groundwork was being laid for what would become the two most legendary careers in WWE history. Following that, Randy Orton made his WWE debut on April 25, 2002 during an episode of Smackdown just a few months before Cena, and Orton's initial persona was that of a clean cut wrestler, highlighting his family's rich wrestling heritage. And in his debut match, Orton faced Hardcore Holly and secured the victory easily, showcasing facing his natural talent but shortly after Orton was drafted to the Raw brand where he joined Evolution and a faction led by Triple H, Ric Flair and Dave Batista. This association rapidly elevated Orton's career as he gained invaluable experience and exposure which quickly propelled him into the spotlight. So in 2004 at SummerSlam, Orton became the youngest world heavyweight champion in WWE's history at the age of 24, a feat that many wrestlers would kill for although it wasn't all sunshines and rainbows for him as there is a downside to becoming the youngest world champion and that's the responsibility that comes from being the face of the company both inside and outside the arena. The youngest world champion in WWE history. The Randy Orton era has only just begun. I think he was ready to be the world champion in the ring. I don't think he was ready to be world champion outside the ring. You're now the face of the company the pressure being on the road, the constant interviews, uh, the schedule, you know, yeah, he, just, he wasn't ready for that, he was just a kid. So it seems as though Randy Orton was still finding out who he was in the company, as portraying a babyface just didn't seem natural, which is why he quickly lost the title a month later. On the flip side of things, John Cena made his WWE debut on June 27th, 2002 on an episode of Smackdown. He answered the open challenge from Kurt Angle and immediately made an impact with his match, but more importantly with his promo. Ruthless aggression. So while Randy was struggling with coming to grips with his character, Cena seemed to be going through the same thing, as he initially struggled with finding his footing with various gimmicks and was almost fired by the company. But his career's trajectory changed when he adopted the rapper persona now known as the Doctor of Thugonomics. To me, I was one of the guys that was going to get his pink slip. So like, hey, we're going to fire you, but do you want to do this thing? Yep, let's go. And I was vaulted into a character that I had to create and take ownership of. Word life. This is basic thugonomic. That was only a small sliver of my life. Mm. I loved hip hop music and I could freestyle pretty good. Yeah. But I just 
dove right in and it worked. And along the way, I had setbacks and failures and mistakes and good performances and bad performances, but... This new character resonated with the audience and Cena quickly rose to prominence. And everything aligned perfectly as the heel JBL held on to the undisputed WWE Championship for some time now. And WWE was looking for a new face of the company ever since The Rock and Stone Cold left. So by 2005, he won his first WWE Championship at WrestleMania 21, solidifying his status as the main event star and the ultimate good guy within WWE. And this would prove to be the catalyst for their epic rivalry to begin. Do y'all like Randy Orton? Randy Orton gonna beat Chris Benoit for the World Heavyweight Championship. At least you got the people behind you. <laughs> to many, it wasn't until 2007 that both Randy Orton and John Cena began feuding with each other for the very first time. So after Orton separated from a tag team with Edge, Randy returned to his true form and he wanted to be the top guy in the promotion by any means possible. For that to happen, he had to knock Cena down from his pedestal, who was in a year-long title run at this point. Oh. So WWE couldn't have booked a more perfect scenario as it played into Randy Orton's character. And to kick things off, soon after Cena won a match on Raw, he was attacked out of nowhere by the Viper and became the number one contender for Cena's WWE title thanks to the GM Jonathan Coachman. As both were set to face each other at that year's SummerSlam, something the fans were calling for. The new number one contender and the man who will face John Cena at SummerSlam for the WWE Championship. This felt fresh on so many levels as both men were still young and the main event scene was looking phenomenal. And as SummerSlam was coming up, Randy started attacking Cena at any chance he got and wanted to embarrass him at the event. So by the time SummerSlam rolled around, the fans were not left disappointed as the tension was high in the arena upon who would be winning. And as for the match, the spots in it were amazing as it had everything from near falls to false finishes from both men. But unfortunately for Orton, Cena came out on top and Considering how many times they would wrestle in the future, this match felt special as it showcased what both men were capable of. However, Orton wasn't going to let Cena off that easily and this is where he works best. His desire to get what he wants and not giving a shit about the way he accomplishes his goal, that's what separates Orton from the rest. And Randy made sure of this by making Cena's life a living hell by destroying everything he loved the most. So he had to cross a line that nobody should. And Randy did it by brutally kicking Cena's father's head before their match at Unforgiven and the brutality of the attack made this feud go up a notch as it added another layer to the storytelling because when you attack somebody that Big Match John loves that's when you make things a lot more emotional and personal for the audience. It became personal with me. At the event, John Cena's father was ringside and it seemed to be the tipping point as we saw a side to him that we've never seen before. And John Cena was relentless when attacking Randy Orton in the match, but this ended up being his downfall as he ended up getting disqualified by the referee. Hey yo, what the fuck? Luckily, the roles managed to be reversed as Cena's father was the one that managed to boot Randy Orton in the face. So in terms of this feud, it seemed like Randy at this point kept giving John Cena obstacles to get over. And like all good baby faces, Cena was overcoming them. However, sadly, everything was put on hold because in October 2007, Cena tore his pectoral muscle while wrestling Mr. Kennedy on an episode of Raw. And despite the pain that he was in, he still managed to finish the match and took a beat down from Orton after the bell. It wasn't until the next episode of Raw that it was revealed to the world that Big Match John will be shelved for the next six months by Vince McMahon. So Cena was forced to relinquish the WWE Championship and the fans were divided about the decision. However, there was a silver lining in all of this and that was in the absence of John, Randy was able to grow even more and more within the company as his need to become the best meant that we got to see a side that we've never seen before. As a result, Randy Orton would go on to win the title at the following No Mercy pay-per-view and start dominating the main event scene. However, this unfortunate injury to John Cena probably led to one of the greatest Royal Rumble returns of all time. Coming into Royal Rumble 2008, many fans didn't know what to expect. After all, just three months ago, the face of the company was shelved. So everyone thought that anyone could really win the Rumble match and challenge Randy for his title. And considering the competitors in the ring were no stranger to the main event, like we had Dave Bautista, Shawn Michaels, The Undertaker, Kane, and even Triple H. But this was Super Cena. He returned at the Royal Rumble and came out at number 30 and the shock on Triple H's face as the crowd lost their minds was priceless. So as the road to WrestleMania was building, Cena didn't appreciate the fact that Orton was on top. And more importantly, he didn't want him to walk into WrestleMania 24 as the champ. So he did something differently. He cashed his title opportunity at No Way Out. Of course, you folks would like to have WrestleMania right here tonight. 
But since you can't wait till WrestleMania, you're on. No way out. I don't forget, Randy. I don't forget all the pain. I don't forget all the suffering. I don't forget that you took this from me. But little did Cena know that Orton had become even cleverer in his absence. Knowing that Cena wouldn't be going down easily, Orton did the most heelish move possible and slapped the ref and got himself disqualified. So while he might have lost the match, he got to keep the title. So setting things up, Orton and Cena would meet again at WrestleMania 24, but this time in a triple threat match involving Triple H, making the challenge that much harder for each competitor. And despite the fact that the odds were against him, Randy did what most champions fail to do, and that is to retain their championship at WrestleMania, to the surprise of many fans. I retained the title, I think they did a poll, and 8% of our fans thought that I had actually retained, so that little swerve was nice. This somewhat concluded Cena and Orton's one year long feud, as the two wouldn't meet each other in a singles match for one whole year. But the Raw after Mania was insane as it left the door open for many more matches between the two. And as mentioned, many fans didn't expect Orton to win, so he made sure to make a special shout out to all the haters. This, alongside Cena's I Will Not Quit persona, meant that there was still more to come. Expecting someone else? I guarantee victory at breaking point because I will not quit. Early 2009 was a rough year for WWE, and this was about the time when fans got sick of Orton vs John, as it was always them two in the main event. And when comparing the feuds to Austin vs Rock, it just didn't feel the same as they always felt like there was an element missing. Although, in 2009, each match was different as they tried to keep things fresh. It's fair to say that this was the year that they upped their game. So we saw John Cena feuding with Edge for the World Heavyweight Championship, while Randy Orton on the other hand was up against his old teammate Triple H for the WWE Championship. But as always, Cena got inserted into the feud when all three men had another triple threat match for the WWE title at Nio Champions, which Orton won again. After the event, Cena earned another opportunity to face Orton for the title at SummerSlam. And that match was overbooked like hell because the match kept restarting because of Orton's heel tactics. And I guess the mind games worked because Randy ended up winning the match anyhow. And if there's one major drawback to this feud that holds it back in the eyes of the many, it is the fatigue of the whole thing. And that's something that John Cena even addressed himself. One could speculate that possible audience fatigue of watching performers together for half a year. That's a lot of interaction. Despite many fans being tired of this feud, the two stars ended up surprising everyone with great matches on different occasions. They probably had their best match together in the form of an I Quit match at Breaking Point. And during the event, Orton would beat the shit out of Cena and even had him handcuffed and tied to a ring post at one point. So as he welled on him, many thought that this would be the moment that Super Cena would finally fall. But John Cena made a phenomenal comeback and ended up winning the match and the title. However, it didn't matter because Orton would end up winning the title back inside the next pay-per-view at Hell in a Cell. This is bullshit. So at this point, the two were just playing hot potato with the title. However, as mentioned, this was the year that they tried to be as creative as possible. And the two were giving everything in the ring, which needs to be appreciated because they were the ones keeping WWE afloat at the time. And without one another, WWE would have felt very stale, which is why the ante had to be turned up for the next match. I am talking about for a rematch, an Iron Man match. So a match was set between the two at Bragging Rights in a 60 minute Iron Man match, which sounds risky considering Randy Orton usually works at a slower pace. However, the structure of this match was built well and Orton's usual slower pace worked effectively and his use of the pyro was just the icing on the cake as it will show you the lengths that Randy will go to to win. But John Cena's big power moves in the end were executed well and Cena was able to regain the WWE Championship with a 6-5 record. And this seemed to be a thing match to end their epic rivalry as the symbolism behind going at it for 60 minutes kind of summed up the past 3 years quite nicely. However, that wasn't the end of it. While Cena and Orton would wrestle several more times on Raw for the next couple of years, their rivalry wouldn't be picked up until late 2013. While many believe that this was not the right time to run back to their rivalry, as Daniel Bryan was red hot in 2013, and that's the only person they wanted to see on the TV screens. However, 
This time, the company decided to do something different with Cena and Orton's rivalry. At the time, Orton was the WWE Champion and Cena was the World Heavyweight Champion. For years, many fans clamoured for just one world champion in WWE and they were about to get that when the company announced a TLC unification match between the two. As I believe it's time there should be only one champion. The segments and promo leading up to the match were good and it wasn't easy to predict who would become the first ever WWE World Heavyweight Champion as both stars were among the most protected in the company. But doing a unification match between the two seemed fitting at this point in their careers as we will all know pound for pound who was the better man. So when it came to the match, they gave it their all. From the table spots, from Cena hanging from the tile, to Randy being put through the announce table. This match had it all, as each man almost knew exactly what the other was going to do to counter it. Unifying the titles is one thing. To have such a competitive rivalry and, and a rivalry that fans enjoy seeing more than once. All those stories and all that uh, timeline crashing in on itself. It helped us. In the end, Randy tied up John to the ropes and slowly made his way up to the ladder. And while most expected Cena to make some sort of heroic recovery, it wasn't the case as Orton would go on to win the whole thing and putting a close to the longest rivalry in WWE and cementing both men in the history books. John Cena, you know, maybe the greatest of all time, like he's in that discussion. But I always felt like Randy never got the credit he deserved. The entire career that John had, he needed a bad guy to play off of. John Cena and Randy Orton's rivalry would always hold a special place in the hearts of those who'd been watching the product in the late 2000s. While their food got tiring at one point, you cannot deny that both men worked tremendously together and the chemistry between them is unrivaled. Which is why when you ever hear any of the two speak about one another, it's nothing but admiration. Which is why I believe if John has a final match, it has to be against the Viper, Randy Orton.